Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. In the first part of this question, we're going to be finding the four solutions of this equation. So we've got two factors being multiplied together, giving us zero. So either one or the other of them has got to be zero. So we can say that either x squared plus four is zero, or x squared plus eight x plus 25 is equal to zero. So let's start off with the x squared plus four is zero. Well, we can subtract four from both sides to get that x squared is negative four. And then square rooting, x is going to be plus or minus the square root of negative four. So that's going to be plus or minus two i. So that's the first two roots found. And then the other quadratic won't be quite so simple because it, uh, well, it won't factorise, will it? And it's got an x term in it, so we're going to need to use the formula. So we've got that x is equal to minus b, so minus 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So that's 64 minus 4 times 25. And then we're dividing by 2 times 1. So dividing by 2. So let's just simplify the uh, discriminant. So working out 64 minus 4 times 25, that's 64 minus 100. So we've got the square root of negative 36. So again, we're going to have an i coming in there, aren't we? And dividing by 2. So we've got minus 8 plus or minus, well, square rooting 36 gives us 6, and then square rooting negative 1 gives us i, so plus or minus 6, i over 2. So that will give us that x is minus 4 plus or minus 3i. So as requested, we have found four roots. So let's write them down clearly. Right, so we found out that the uh, first two roots were plus or minus 2i, so let's write them down as 2i, negative 2i, and then the next two were negative 4 plus 3i, and negative 4 minus 3i. So that completes part A. So in part B, all we need to do is add together these four numbers. So we've got 2i minus 2i, then we've got minus 4 plus 3i, take away 4 and take away 3i. So you, you can see there that all the terms in i cancel out. So all we're left with are two negative 4s, so the answer is negative 8. Now there is a way of checking that that number is correct if you think about comparing coefficients. So if you're not sure if that answer is correct, what you could do is have a look at the uh, function and think about what would happen if you multiplied it out. So you would multiply x squared by x squared and get x to the fourth. Then you'd multiply something else together to get a term in x cubed and so on. So you'd end up getting something that's clearly a quartic, starting off with x to the fourth and ending up with, well, four times 25 will be 100. So you'll get terms in powers of x starting from x to the fourth down to uh, a constant term. Now, we're only interested in finding the sum of the four roots. So what we could do is think about in general terms, if we had a quartic equation, where, those four, where the sum of the four roots would, would pop up. So if we had a look at writing down the equation in the form of, let's call the roots alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. If we write it down as x minus alpha, x minus beta, x minus gamma, and x minus delta. So where alpha, beta, gamma, and delta are our roots, so we're here assuming we're not sure what the roots are, if we then started multiplying it out, well, if we took an x from each bracket, that would give us x to the fourth. And then, if we took an x from three of the brackets, but the 
the root from each of the other brackets. So for example, taking the minus alpha from the first bracket, burden x from the second, the third, and the fourth bracket, that would give us minus alpha times x times x times x. So that would be minus alpha times x cubed and so on. So if we do that for each of the brackets, then we can see that the thing that we're interested in, and we don't really mind about whatever the rest of it's equal to, that would be our equation written in, in general terms. So the important thing is we can see that the number that multiplies x cubed is negative the sum of the roots. So if we now look back to the equation, the, well, to the, the function that we were given, it's actually simple because there's only one way in which we can get x cubed. Because there is no term in x in the first bracket, the only way of getting x cubed is by multiplying x squared by 8x. So comparing coefficients of x cubed, we know that minus alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta must be equal to 8. In other words, the sum of the roots, which is alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta, must be minus 8. In other words, we were correct.